Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's April. On this episode of Build Watch, we're going to be talking about the specific information that's available to you on the True Homes My True Connect website, which you gain access to after you've purchased your plot. So I wanted to show you guys what the full website looks like, what you can find in that space, and then what you can do in that space. I hope this video, as always, is helpful for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Keep watching. This site is the My True Connect website, which is the homepage for three various sections of um, True Homes information. Um, as you can see, there's actually lots of information contained on this page. I did black out the important stuff, um, private information like addresses, phone numbers, and email addresses. But you can find your home address, your new home address on this page. You can find your true advisor's email, name, and phone number, as well as a picture. Same for your showroom consultant and your personal builder. On this page, you can also find a buy and build tab, a warranty tab, a landscaping tab. These three things are super important and full of a lot of very helpful information. My favorite is the buy and build tab, which is what I'm gonna spend most of today's video talking about. On the next page, as I scroll down on this page, this is a picture, um, which is, so I'm just narrating over a picture. But again, you can see that I've blacked out important information like home address and um, community names and things like that. But you can also find all of your documents, which will include things like your options manual, the ratified contract, the selections that you make at the showroom, any photos that have been taken during the construction of your home, and then also the overall plot plan of your um your home so these are all very important documents and you can print these out you can send them to yourself or someone else in an email further down on this page there is also a list of every email that true homes has ever sent me i am not going to go down because it does contain um some sensitive information but that information is contained there as well so you don't have to dig through your own email inbox to find it so I'm actually going to lead you guys over to the buy and build tab now so you can see my favorite part of the website. So on the buy and build tab, you can see lots of information about the exact steps that your home build will go through over the course of the time that you're waiting for your custom build home to be complete. True Homes operates in two phases, phase one, which is the prepare phase, and as you can see, has lots of steps, and then phase two, which is the uh, build home which has or build phase which has fewer steps so i'm gonna walk you through like what this website actually looks like and the information that it contains right now so this is just an introduction to what you can expect to see on the page and then also an introduction to what the experience is like every time that something happens every time that you move forward in a in a phase in a phase so you move on to the next step you'll receive an email to let you know what step of the process you're currently in. You'll also see that they're actually trying to help you pre-plan how much time you'll need for meetings and various appointments over the course of your home build. So as you can see here, they've detailed how much each moment or each appointment will take. A loan application walkthrough with a loan officer should take you one to two hours, for example. The design studio appointment should take approximately three hours, but can take up to four or five. None of these times listed include your travel time, and a lot of these are, are performed during normal work hours. So for example, my loan application and the design studio appointment, as well as the new home review meeting, all happened during normal business hours. This was time that I had to take off of work in order to make sure that I could be available for these very important appointments. I have not had my new home orientation yet, or the closing, obviously, warranty orientation or warranty inspection and repair. But I assume that just as with the other appointments, these will be during business hours and I will have to be prepared to take time off. So just something to think about when you are building and or buying a new home. The next step is talking about the purchase agreement. So this is when you go in and you sit down, apologies, and you sit down with your 
loan officer and um, you talk about what plot you want and you talk about what style of home you want to build on that plot and you also at this meeting are going to talk about what add-ons you want to put into this house. So for example, an add-on for us was that we um, added on a bonus room and then we finished that bonus room and then we also added on a sliding glass door instead of the traditional um, single door that opens to the outside. And we changed the layout of the kitchen just to make it more of an open floor. All of those things needed to be finalized at that moment. That creates what's called a ratified contract. Once the ratified contract is available and ready to go, you are going to receive a copy of the contract and what's known as the option manual for your home. This is what I'm going to go over with you guys on Thursday, but you don't get any of that information, nor do you get your design studio appointment until you ratify your contract. This information is for people who are making cash purchases. That was not the reality for me. Um, but if you are somebody who has the ability to make a cash purchase, this tab is for you. They also give you a step, a walkthrough on the loan application. True Homes actually has several preferred lenders that they work with, um, which makes the process so much easier because the preferred lenders are super familiar with the True Homes process. And so you as the buyer don't have to contact them every time you've moved forward in the next step of a phase. The mortgage company is already on it. They already know what dates need to be hit. They already know what documents need to be sent. And it just makes everything so much easier. We also get an incentive closing cost from True Homes for using a preferred lender, which is great because it just makes everything easier at the end of the process. Sorry. Something that you might not know about during the process is what you can see right here. You will also want to be prepared at the time of application to pay for your home appraisal. This cost is approximately $500. What you'll find is that your mortgage company is actually gonna charge you three separate times over the course of your home bill to prepare for um, your closing. The first bill that's going to come out is a known charge, which means they're going to tell you um, that they're about to pull this money and it's $500. They keep your card number on file. It's $500. And that's to get an appraiser to go out and inspect your home. There's another second appraisal that's $300. And they also let you know when that money will be withdrawn from the account. The final appraisal, which is $200, is not a known date. They do not tell you when that money will be coming out of your account. So if you are somebody who is not great with managing your money, make sure that the card number that you give them is perhaps a card that you don't use often and put money specifically on that card for this process. Then you're gonna go through the pre-qualification steps and this is when your mortgage counselor, the specific person who your mortgage company assigns to work with you, just walks you through what they need in order to get loan approval on your home. So they're going to look for your proof of employment, your credit score, any open and revolving debts that you may have, like car loans, credit cards, etc. how much money you make in a year, so they'll need your W-2s, recent tax forms, etc. They're gonna use this information to provide you with a pre-qualification letter. And that pre-qualification letter is going to A, tell people that you can get a loan for a home and B, tell you how much money you can spend on a home, whether that's new or an older home. You want to finish this within 14 days, specifically because if you don't finish it within 14 days, you run the risk of losing the plot of land that you've actually already paid for. Because when you have that initial meeting with your loan officer, sorry, not your loan officer, with your True Homes advisor, you put down money in order to save and or reserve that piece of land. After you've done your mortgage pre-qualification, you're going to go visit the design studio. The design studio will contact you to schedule your appointment and they'll give you a range of dates. They'll let you know when other people in your neighborhood are coming in. Um, and they're really trying to make sure that everybody in your neighborhood is coming into the design studio at the same time. This helps prevent later down the road, a super active construction site 
after you've already moved in. So it actually is for your benefit. In order to schedule your design center appointment, you have to have your pre-qualification letter, the contract must be ratified, your lot, your floor plan, your elevation, which is the exterior of the home, and any structural options and any requests for pricings. So for instance, when we wanted the sliding glass doors, they didn't actually have a price for that. So we had to we had to perform an RFP, which is us asking how much does this cost and them returning it costs this, do you want it or not? We had to have all of that before we could actually schedule our design center appointment. The appointments are only Monday through Friday and they are only between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. That means that if you are somebody who cannot get off early in the day, you need like a later appointment. The latest that your appointment can be scheduled is probably about 1.30 because the design center closes at five and the appointment is about three to three and a half hours at a minimum. Some types of builds take two design center visits. Our build, which was an elements collection for True Homes, only took approximately, uh, it took one day and approximately four hours. We are not the only people in the design studio when you go visit, just as an FYI, and you are not allowed to bring a ton of people. They really just want the adults who are going to be making the primary decisions. They do provide you with both a virtual design studio selection guide and an options manual for your specific um, structural home. So for example, our model is the Devon. So they do provide you with an options manual, AKA things that can go inside of a Devon. You don't want to look at options manuals for homes that are not going to be like yours because you'll think that you can get this added to your home. You absolutely can't because that's just not a feature for your house. At the design center, you make your final selections at that time. You also have to be prepared to put down a deposit at the design studio appointment. That design studio appointment deposit is ACH, which is automatic cash, cash withdrawal or a check withdrawal um, from your banking account. No cash, no money orders. And this deposit actually does count towards your closing costs. So your down payment at closing. If you are not able to pay that ACH withdrawal deposit at the design studio, you can't proceed in the steps, which is, you know, so just be prepared. So once you've gone in and you've made all of your decisions, you've made your choice, True Homes is going to go ahead and submit a final amount to your mortgage lender. And your mortgage lender is going to look at that amount and they'll say, yes, this is fine. We will approve this person for this amount. Um, if you are using a lender who is not a True Homes preferred lender or your builder's preferred lender, you actually need to make sure that your mortgage company is running through those steps. With the preferred lender, we don't have to do that. They, they did it all yourself. This step just makes sure, or not make sure, but it really helps you feel secure in the fact that when everything is said and done, when it's time to close, you can actually close on your house because you haven't overspent. The lender has approved the amount of money that you've set down at the, at the showroom floor. And it just makes you feel so much more secure that you're gonna be walking away with the keys to your home when the home is finished. After that, and you get the final purchase price, the home plans and the specifications are in order, True Homes will send that information over to the mortgage lender. And the mortgage lender is going to order an appraisal. That appraisal is necessary to determine how much money the lender is willing to give you based on what to include or what you want to include in the um, basic home purchase price. Keep in mind that your design studio choices are included in your mortgage. A lot of people don't know that, that they are included in your mortgage if you are taking out a loan, unless you choose to pay for all of your design center choices up front at the design center, which is also something that you can do. The appraiser will come out, they're going to look at neighborhoods in your area at homes that have the same number of bedrooms that your home is supposed to have, um, the same number of bathrooms, the same square footage, and they're gonna say, okay, well, this home is appraising for $350,000, and that home is appraising for three sixty, dollars and that home's appraising for three sixty five. dollars They're going to find a median value, and they're gonna say that that is what your home will be worth when the building is finished. Ideally, you want this number to be higher 
than what you've paid. You want your appraisal to come in higher than the contract purchase price. If it is not, there are alternate solutions. The alternate solutions include removing certain selections. So like if you have like a level three countertop, they might bring you down to a level one to reduce the purchase price. They might ask for a cash deposit to cover the gap between the appraisal and the purchase price, or they might ask you to find a new lender who will provide an appraisal that's closer to the contract purchase price. Because basically, say for example, the loan is $365,000, but your appraiser says, oh, this house will only be worth $345,000. That's a $20,000 gap. And the mortgage company will say, oh, well, if it's going to be worth $345,000, that's how much we're going to give you. But True Homes, as the builder, will still expect the $20,000 that they will have sunk into this house for materials, for time, for their builders and other contract workers. So you would be responsible for ponying up that $20,000 gap and or removing selections to get down to 345. You don't want your appraisal to come in lower than the actual purchase price. Once all that's done, you're gonna enter a stage called pre-construction. It looks like absolutely nothing is happening on your lot. It's terrible. But what they're doing is all the work behind the scenes. They are getting the home plans finalized. They are ordering all the parts and materials. They have to get permits from the city and other officials. They have to create, and they have to work with an engineer so that they can tell you what your home site will actually look like. For example, we have what's called a left-handed house, which means that our garage is on the left hand of the left hand side of the house instead of the right hand side of the house. This is a structural difference from the model because typically the home, the model that we chose has a right-handed garage. The reason why they made this was just because of the format of our, or the way that our lot is set up on the land, our foundation is set on the land. They chose to make it a left-handed house just so it would look better. Those are things that all need to be taken care of before they can actually move forward in the next step. They also need to lay down your initial piping. They need to put down um, your initial cable, electrical, um, gas lines, all of that good stuff has to be laid underneath the ground before they can start laying the foundation and framing. So even though it really looks like nothing is happening for quite a while, they're doing a lot of work behind the scenes. They're also going to lay your foundation down during this time, but please be aware that seeing concrete on the ground does not actually mean that your construction has started. They might lay your foundation down early because of weather conditions that are coming up. So say for example, if it's going to be cold, like in the next, like before your home is finished built, building, being built, wow. They might lay your foundation down early just to make sure that the foundation is stable and doesn't crack before they actually start putting up the frame. This step, in my opinion, took the longest. But once pre-construction is done, you move on to phase two, which is the building phase, okay? So you get what's called an authorized to start email. And that authorized to start email just basically says that all of your permits have been obtained, the structural design is perfect, the lot looks great, they've laid the foundation and it is solid and stable enough to start building a frame on. Framing starts in about 30 days from when you get that authorized to start. In our experience, framing actually started for us before we even got the authorized to start email. Your personal builder at that time is going to schedule what's called a new home review. You go with him and you meet him in the model at the neighborhood that you're going to be living in. And um, you just walk through what to expect in this process, how long it's gonna take, um, any specific measurements that you might need. For example, our builder is very helpful. The things that he's walked us through included we don't want the standard bathroom sink that comes in the powder room. We wanna switch that out. So we needed to know exactly what size sink we could get in that space. He has that information. We also wanted to put in a porch swing. We've since changed our mind, but there was the idea of a porch swing. Um, and so he showed me exactly where in the roof I would need to have somebody drill into in order to securely hook that porch swing if that was what I wanted. 
Um, he gave us information about the warranties, the various warranties that you can expect to receive. And he also provided us just basically with a timeline rundown. They keep a running calendar of when each home's start date is, when each home's, you know, will start receiving interior construction because the interior construction team is different than the exterior construction team. Just lots and lots of information at this meeting. So if you don't take a notebook with you, you're probably going to forget quite quite a few things. This step will also help you um, get the contact information that you might need. Our builder has been on site every day, Monday through Friday. So if we happen to go by the site, he's usually there and he's very community, communi communicative, <laughs> which is great. Um, but maybe that's not going to be your experience. So you might want to know how best to contact your builder going forward. The next step is the actual construction of the home. Once your home goes up, you can expect to take about, or your frame goes up, you can expect it to take about three to four months from start to finish. Um, your personal builder is going to make sure that everything goes exactly to your specifications during that time. The frame start date is scheduled from a corporate office for true homes. Um, and this way, you know, it, it just works at their process. There's no way for you to personally speed that up or slow it down. They have a schedule and they're sticking to it. Once we've reached the part where it's almost time to close, we have 45 days prior to closing, True Homes is going to go ahead and reach out to your lender. Your lender is once again going to verify your employment, your credit score, all your bank statements. They're going to give that information to True Homes as a clear to close for your loan. If all of the items meet the guidelines, you get notified of your closing day and time seven days prior to the appointment you will want to make sure that you are on top of your lender during this time because you want to make sure that everything is going to go according to plan. Um, so just make sure that when you know that your home is coming to, you know, it's almost finished, you're aware of what's happening at that moment. Also, very important, if you are building or buying a home, that you do not quit your job, you do not make big purchases, you do not put your bank account into the negative, none of that stuff at all from the time that you start the home buying purchase until the day that you close on that home because any of that can cause you to lose out on the home that you've built or your dream home. Once that's done, you go to your new home orientation meeting with your builder. It's three days prior to your closing appointment, so you are almost at the door. You almost have the keys. This is scheduled by the builder. You meet at your home, and the builder is just gonna walk through with you the key features of your home. So how to use the air conditioning, how to use the appliances, and a review of the warranties one more time. You are also going to, together, walk through the home and look at all the finishings in your house, and you're gonna do what's called a blue tape review. So that's looking at the paint, the countertops, the flooring, um, the like any finish in your home that you selected. Make sure that you look at it and verify that it looks exactly right. Even if it's just a small missing speck of paint, you're gonna put a blue painter's tape, a piece of blue painter's tape on that speck and they're going to fix it for you before you take ownership of that home. If you wait to do this until after you take ownership of the home, then you are responsible for fixing all of the small issues or maybe not so small issues that you find. This can take at least three hours. So again, this might be an appointment that takes you all day. You might have to take half a day or a whole day off of work. Be prepared for that. Once the home is complete, you're gonna be contacted or almost complete. You're gonna be contacted by the closing department from your builder to start you to start getting you ready for closing. This is going to contain information from a closing attorney and then also wiring instructions if you have a deposit to pay um, on the closing date. You have to make sure that your lender has all the proper documentation and is ready to close on that day and time. If you're working with a preferred lender, this might not be as much of an issue for you as it is for some people. Make sure that your insurance agent is ready with your new homeowner's policy in place at least 48 hours prior to closing. If you don't have an insurance agent and you do not have insurance, you will not be able to close on your home. It is required for um, more people who are taking out a mortgage on the home. It is just a recommendation for people who are cash purchasers, but you know, it's never a bad idea to have insurance on your house. 
Once all of that information is gathered, including your proof of employment, your credit history, your bank account information, the proof that you have insurance, et cetera, et cetera, your close, that's called a closing package. That has to be sent over by the lender to True Home's closing attorney three days before the closing date and time. The attorney is going to calculate the exact amount that you're going to have to provide at the closing. This is called your cash required for closing. Um, and you should probably round that figure up to the nearest hundred dollars and it has to be a certified check. Um, yeah, you have to, it has to be a certified check. If there is like a small adjustment, so say like you end up owing more, you can use a personal check or if you pay too much, then you would get a refund from the attorney. Um, you do need to take time off of work to attend your closing because that is a Monday through Friday only appointment and it takes about two hours. Um, and that's pretty much the whole process. If you have to delay your closing, True Homes actually charges a $500 a day fee. So I wouldn't recommend a delayed closing. Some people have no choice, but just know that that is another thing that can add money onto your books. So this is what this stage of, or this site looks like. It's probably one of my favorite things to look at because I just like seeing how close we are to almost finish. We are actually in the home construction phase right now. And so we only have three more steps left in this whole process. Very, very exciting. The second screen on the My True Connect page is the warranties page. I'm not going to go through each one of these, but I did just want you to know that this is a thing that is available to you. So it'll give you the key points of your warranty, the things that are not covered under your warranty, the services that you can expect, and then the services that you can expect over years one through 10. It also tells you what they will cover while you're living in a community that is being, that is in active construction and what they will not. And then they go through each and every last single aspect of your home. So your HVAC, your electrical, plumbing, flooring, concrete, windows and doors, appliances, cabinets and countertops, the closet pantry shelving, the mirrors, the fireplace if you have one, the roofing, the siding, the gutters and downspouts, the framing, a deck if you have one, and then facts about client services. These will tell you what is covered and what is not covered under the True Homes warranty and then for how long each item is covered. I did want to quickly cover the living in an active building community just so you know that some things are actually like things that you might expect them to cover they will not cover we'll be living in an active building community because they don't expect to finish building in our community until july um, so you should know that there are going to be things like trash nails in the street dirt in the roads construction vehicles which might make it easy i mean hard for you to maneuver around in your neighborhood you should be aware that Weekly street cleaning is performed in the communities if there is active construction and people are living there. That it that they put those big blue dumpsters in active building communities, but you're not allowed to place your trash in it. It's actually illegal and you can be fined for that. Um, so these are some of the things that they are actually not going to cover. Tire damage, for example, they're not going to cover that. Um, so they literally tell you if you're going to buy new tires, buy them from a store that provides a road hazard warranty because they're not going to replace that. Um, trash is something that you can contact your personal builder, sorry, about if like that's becoming a thing for you, like I said, on the property. So these are just a few examples of what are and what is and is not covered by your by the company during the active building process. So the last tab on the My True Connect page is the landscaping tab. This seems like it's very unimportant in the grand scope of purchasing a brand new home, but it actually is pretty important. You are responsible for maintaining the grass properly. And if you do not, you can be fined by your HOA if you happen to have one of those. Your builder should tell you what type of grass you'll be working with. True Homes uses three, Bermuda, Fescue, and Centipede. Our home will have Bermuda grass and they'll also provide you with information on how to maintain your grass over the course of the um, the seasons. Um, so we'll probably be moving in between the March and May moment and so it tells you exactly how you should mow the lawn, what tools you should use, what you should use to fertilize, and then how you should irrigate and control the weed, insects, and remove any thatch. If you need to renovate, this is also when you would do that.
Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'd love to answer them. Um, on Thursday, we'll be covering the options manual and what are some items that you should get at the showroom and what are some items you can install yourself. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys again on Thursday. Bye.